السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد و نسلی اللہ رسول کریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب الشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی نبائی شافی انشاءاللہ وی ویل بی کورنگ چیپٹر 89 تو 92 فرسٹ اینڈ انشاءاللہ دین ویل موو آن فردر so this book is reaching towards its end and we have actually understood that solution to many matters don't just begin by sort of hit on that challenge right away but it's your whole personality grooming your relationship with allah subhanahu wa taala your ideologies the concepts you have related to different verses in quran how you understand them how you look at your sins how you see the impact of sins how you understand what shaitan does how do you feel your nafs either it is tame or it is moving towards fitnas how you understand the repercussion or the consequences of whatever actions you take in the form of punishments then why your relationship is not strong with allah subhanahu wa taala that you're falling into these worldly love affairs to such an extent that it's giving you such mental agony and such torture then how we perceive human life and how we look at the gateways to sin and yes finally understanding the concept of zina it's not like two love birds it's about doing something which is really haram or a path that is opening towards haram so now Imam Qayyim ibn Jauzi talks about what's the treatment of broken hearts is there any cure for it because when you have this heartache when you are in misery you want to get rid of these killer thoughts you want to have some clue to any traceable path to recovery you definitely want to detox from these obsessive desires and you are actually looking for a spiritual cardiologist you are asking around can this broken heart be revived will i ever be able to feel like a normal person again on every provoke the insights of players whether they are going in the right direction or not and on each nasiha if i'm moving towards more inclination and becoming more defensive so there are multiple questions which surround this broken heart and lot of agony and it is adding on to their agony so basically what you need is if you want new results you need to have new mindset this is what the experts say who are working on mind sciences they say that basically the messages we give ourselves from the conscious brain they start getting registered in subconscious brain and our whole neuronal circuits synapses and the neurotransmitters they start working in our body accordingly like when you for anything it could be just a small thing like someone tells you have a healthy lifestyle get up in the morning and exercise and you just sit back and say it's not possible well there are so many people all over the world who are doing it who are making it happen so if you look at it that way that if they can do it why can't i do it so the moment you tell yourself it's not possible then your brain perceives it as a difficult task and doesn't give you command to make it happen but when you say yeah why not let me try it let me look into some practical steps let me read about it let me see how it is going to be healthy for me so inshallah eventually you will feel you will see that it will happen prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whatever disease allah has sent down he has also appointed a cure for it so this is the reassurance for all the people who have broken heart who don't know how to manage their emotions after that so we have two solution one is to stop its cause because it becomes established as a habit and second is removing the problem before it dominates one's mind either you make sure you don't land into that trouble and that is what we have covered so far all the efforts that we have to make to ensure that we are peaceful we are well protected we are happy individuals we are not falling into these traps but if let's say the problem has occurred now what do we do 
now we need to learn how to remove this problem and working on a mindset is not easy for that you need 500% support from allah subhanahu wa taala and then one thing that we need to start practicing which you have to practice even before you get into this trouble is lowering your gaze and this is in compliance with the commands of allah it prevents the facts of the poisonous arrows of shaitan from reaching its targets and it keeps the heart in the harmonious company of allah by giving the opportunity to see the unlawful as it is it also strengthens one's heart and lightens it so gives strength against worship of desires and we have very categorically studied in surah nur verse number 30 kul lil mu'minina yaudu min absarihim wa yahfuzu furujahum zalika asqalahum inna allaha khabirun bima yasna'un tell the believing men to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts this is purer for them indeed allah is acquainted with what they do so we have studied the whole concept ya ghuddu min absarim it's not like you're looking down and you're constantly banging into different things no min absarim out of certain looks like when you feel any attraction it could be in a magazine social media when you're all alone nobody's there in a class studying from a teacher uh, at a wedding being with family members so the moment you feel attraction for someone you have to do this ya ghuddu min absarim lower your gaze because in surah nur verse number 35 allah taala tells us allahu nurus samawati wal ard masalu nurihi kamishkatin fiha misbah allah is the light of the heavens and the earth the example of his light is like a niche within which is a lamp so if we want that light we have to work on ourselves properly this inherits a truthful insight to distinguish between truth and falsehood okay sometimes a person you can forget you don't follow them or not talk about them still you miss someone where this matter belongs and how can we stop missing someone okay that's a very very important question you have to look at it as a healing process sometimes you get hurt the healing will depend upon the intensity of the hurt for example you just banged your toe against table it will hurt you very badly for a while but within few hours you will forget about it okay there is another form of hurt you cut your finger so it might bleed you might need stitches for few days you'll remember that you'll take care of it and then in years to come you will have a scar over there you would even tell people look you know the scar is from the time i cut myself with the knife but you'll be over with it it is there as a reminder but it's not hurting you anymore then sometimes let's say you have a fracture or you have a fractured leg and the doctor tells you orthopedic surgeon tells you you need to have nailing and plating so you have major surgery and in that major surgery you even have nailing and plating so they stay with you all the life they drag you down they pull you down but you are going through physiotherapy you are using some stick you are taking all the supports and you are managing with it you are surviving in the society being healthy part of the society with some of your limitations and then there are some diseases which are like weeping wounds you have to do their dressing every day like people who have sugar diabetes what do they have to do they have to monitor their sugar every day they have to lower or increase the dose of insulin or the medication they take they have to go for repeated tests they have to maintain a healthy lifestyle so the more severe your challenge is the more you need to keep working on it but don't give up never be in misery you must have seen people who have a minor ailment and they're constantly complaining about it and they're in misery and we look at them and we're like give me a break people are going through even more miserable states more agonies more problems but they never complain they're such positive people so we need to learn from uh, this that how we manage so this inherits a truthful insight to distinguish between truth and falsehood one's heart would develop firmness strength and power it is said whoever opposes his low desires shaitan fears approaching his shadow it blocks the way for shaitan to enter into the heart starts to beautify an image before the gazer the heart in flame in passion we need to also understand that repeatedly imam qayyim ibn jauzi brings in this verse 
from surah al fatir verse number 10 man kana yuridu al izza falillahi al izzatu jamia whoever desires honor then to allah belongs all honor many times we go into we fall into such traps we go into the clutches of such ideologies because i need to fit in i need to have a certain status certain identity certain izza certain honor and if i follow all these norms the so called norms of the society or whatever my friends are practicing well i will be considered as a cool person but if i tell myself that i need to follow the practices which are given in quran and sunna because izza belongs to allah subhanahu wa taala it doesn't belong to us we are abd we are the slaves we are supposed to just follow the things the parameters which have been given to us by allah subhanahu wa taala so then this concept it helps us then in surah al imran verse number 139 another important parameter wala tahinu wala tahsanu wa antumul alauna in kuntum mu'minin so do not weaken do not grieve and you will be superior if you are the true believers basically we will have highs and lows in life there is not a single person who would say i have never come across any problem any issue any challenge but what we do is we don't stay weak we do not over indulge in crying spells and episodes we give ourselves strength that yes this is painful but i have to come out of it so it helps the heart focus on its benefits because letting the gaze loose would no doubt make the heart forget its duty and would also give one's base self the chance to follow its own desires away from the remembrance of its lord So when one's heart is corrupted it is no longer suitable to accommodate the love and the company of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like when there is a virus attack on your laptop in your computer then you are not able to add on to a good app you will have to then go for complete reformatting. If there is someone who has already logged into your account you won't be able to have access to it. So similarly when our heart is corrupted we won't have Allah's love we won't feel that connection we will not be looking into the healthy parameters in life so love and remembrance of Allah is something that we should be opting for rather than that love where we are waiting for our knight in shining armor we need to engage our heart in halal passion and for that we use the power of fear and love and how do we do that fear whenever we are moving towards something which is wrong love whenever we have so much guilt that it is again not letting us develop that true bonding with allah subhanahu wa taala so we need to have good judgment on the beloved select the highest of the beloved levels from the lowest to bear the lowest of the re- reprehensible in order to save oneself from its highest it is an intellectual duty that you have to perform like when people say ye to dil ka mamla hai ye to dil hai dimag se nahi socho think from your heart that means they are leading you towards emotion but making a choice of a beloved is an intellectual duty let's say you are going to buy yourself something nice where would you go obviously you will want to go to a branded store if you have been given a choice you will want to go to branded store and pick one of the best dresses you wouldn't be going to juma bazar itwar bazar you wouldn't be going to a small market somewhere in um, a small village and pick something randomly which is and you'll say ew this is not like something i would approve of why why you develop certain things whereas you will see that market more loaded than the branded store more people going to that itwar bazar and picking up second hand stuff uh, the landa stuff and so many other kind of things which you wouldn't even think of touching why because you have developed a taste for something which is higher when you have better taste obviously you're not able to then eat from places or wear stuff from places buy stuff from places even be in company of those people where you feel there's no match for the quality so you opt for then the best quality So the problem is since we are loaded with those loves which are lower in quality we are not comfortable with the branded store with the high quality but once we start buying something which is branded 
it will become very difficult for us to use something which is non branded like you know we are using smartphones touch phone and one day you have to uh, pick up a phone which uh, is like the, the 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 lowest quality it's not even a touch phone you have to like actually press those buttons and you have to use it you won't be able to use it you'll be totally lost you'll be like mujhse to isse message hi nahi ho raha but for that for fill you have to do you will have to bear the lowest of the reprehensible because you have to save yourself for that highest so you will go through everything use all the means to be there where you have to be this is an intellectual activity and for that what we have been told we need strong determination to enable one to make the good choice and to give up the bad one like in surah sajda verse number 24 wa ja'alna minhum a'immatan yahduna bi amrina lamma sabaru wa kanu bi ayatina yuqinun and we made from among them leaders guiding by our command when they were patient and when they were certain of our signs there are different categories of people there are people who are guided and they guide others the people who are misguided and they pull others in the same darkness and they use guidance for own self only you'll find people who are not indulged into anything wrong and when they're hanging out with their friends they are taking a back foot they're not talking about guys but they're not even saying to them that let's not talk about them so understanding this concept that basically it's our taste that we have to develop for love of allah subhanahu wa taala it's not possible that you have that feeling that attachment for the highest degree of love and then you fall into this haram love so when we say love of allah and think of love of haram it's not a combo for the heart so one would expel the other basically our challenge is when we say love for allah it's an unseen domain when we are talking about unseen domain and then we have visual pictures in front of us then it becomes challenge the power of love should be devoted to allah alone any other love should only exist for sake of allah having said that when we say for sake of allah means whatever love allah has allowed it's not like i love you my boyfriend for sake of allah no we don't do that yes i can say this to my husband i can say this to my teacher my parents my siblings my grandparents even like if i have halal earning and i'm buying something and i like my gadget or my dress or my handbag i can say i love you for sake of allah because these are halal belongings but doing something haram you can't be holding wine or a drug and say i love you for sake of allah so you can't do that any other love which is devoted to others beside allah would become a torment for its possessor you can try it out this is my whole life experience if i have loved anything if it is halal or haram but i have given it a status the status or the love in my life has to be for allah subhanahu wa taala allah has taken it away you would see that sometimes there are women who love their husband more than allah they do everything for their husband they even follow the haram that their husband are commanding and they give up the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala what happens one day they die or they give divorce they fall in love with another woman but i mean like we all have to die i'm not saying that just because you know you follow something the man is going to die but the point is that love wouldn't last forever and ever and ever so we would be seeing so many people around us our near and dear ones going away i have seen people land into depression because one of their family member passed away well yes it is a state aware i mean if we love someone let's say there's a love between husband and wife there's love between kids and parents there's love between siblings and one of them goes away obviously we will be shattered like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he missed khadija radhiyallahu anha till the end he would cry in so many places but this agony did not affect his productivity he was still a very productive person so he punishes him her with the love of idols or the love of cross or the love of men and women or love of relatives or the love of what is disgraceful because if you are not offering him high quality love then he will also not be interested in you then we need to understand the degrees of love which starts with worship and submission when we are engaged in other loves the torture from love of others idols 
materialism, status, social media, circle, infidelity, perversions, everything is over there. In Surah Jasiya, verse number 23, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us, Afaro aita manit takhaza ilahahu hawahu wa adallahu allahu ala ilmin wa khatama ala sam'ihi wa qalbihi wa ja'ala ala basarihi ghishawa fa man yahdihi min ba'dillah afala tazakkaru have you seen he who has taken as his god his own desires and allah has sent him astray due to knowledge and has sent a seal upon his hearing and his heart and put over his vision a veil so who will guide him after allah then will you not be reminded then the levels of love is also important to remember how we can be tied to our beloved the first level is there is bond of love that is the initial connection then there is ardent love when there is total focus on the beloved then there is infatuation badly hooked then there is passion which is called ishq as deep rooted love do you know that ishq we are going to talk about it again as well this word is not used in quran and sunnah in arabic literature this is taken as a diseased love so we do not use this word for the allah allah subhanahu wa taala and for the prophet then there is longing that is journey of heart to the beloved and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh allah i ask you with the longing and desire to meet you so this initial bonding of love like you know the eye contact when you look at someone you're attracted to someone then your total focus is that person then you're badly hooked to it and then you are in that sick love and that's all that you can focus on we can take the same course but in a healthy manner towards allah subhanahu wa taala developing love for him developing bonding with him bonding of love coming to halakas uh, wanting to listen to quran kalamullah then our focus in everything starts getting better whatever we are doing in life we focus on what he would approve of what he would like what he wouldn't like then we get badly hooked for human beings in haram manner it's infatuation but for allah it is wallazina amanu ashaddu hubban lillah when our love is so strong for allah subhanahu wa taala and that's going to lead us to the journey of the heart toward allah subhanahu wa taala where our focus is i'll do anything and everything for allah and nothing which is leading me to the other path Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in a hadith whoever loves meeting Allah Allah loves to meet him like in surah al-kabut verse number 5 man kana yarju liqa Allah fa inna ajalullah laat wa huwa as-sami'ul alim whoever should hope for the meeting with Allah indeed the term decreed by Allah is coming and he is the hearing and the knowing and similarly we know that in surah an-nahl verse number 97 man amila salihan min zakarin aw unsa wa huwa mu'min falan nuhyiyannahu hayatun tayyiba wa lan najziyannahum ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu ya'malun whoever does righteousness whether male or female while he is a believer we will surely cause him to live a good life and we will surely give them their reward in the hereafter according to the best of what they used to do so what we need is doing amal saleh and our life is going to be out of this misery that's the point catch point for us then in a hadith we find out the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reported that allah said this is hadith say qudsi whoever shows enmity to someone devoted to me i shall be at war with him my servant draws not near to me with anything more more loved by me then the religious duties i have enjoined upon him and my servant continues to draw near to me with nawafil so that i shall love him when i love him i am his hearing with which he hears his seeing with which he sees his hands with which he strikes and his foot with which he walks were he to ask something of me i would surely give it to him and were he to ask me for refuge i would surely grant him it I do not hesitate about anything as much as I hesitate about seizing the soul of my faithful servant. He hates death and I hate hurting him, but it is necessary for him.